We rely on these young people to operate as a charity, and that's for our jobs too. On the very few occasions we had any bits, there was no sigh of relief. There was no notion that the problem was getting any better. <laughs> Instead, we would go looking for the homeless people. Each empty bed has lost revenue, and that just didn't work. One young homeless person is worth around 300 p. 300, 300 pounds. I say it's ridiculous. One young homeless person is worth around 300 pounds a week to the business. Needless to say, I don't work there anymore. With hindsight, I can see how my identification of a problem was there to a degree, but the, the adversary and the skull elements were certainly not in line. The first point I'm trying to make is that focusing on one trouble or concern and working in a reactive capacity does nothing to solve the actual cause of the problem. The trouble also is that if you spend most of your time here, you don't get to see or change the cause. Again, it's something out of frame. And as before, we continue looking for a real solution or a better frame. But we all know this, right? Zartgast 101, systems theory. What this does show us, though, and the second point then, is that multiple individual concerns can still be linked to a singular root cause. The root cause is something which can be shared. It is the common ground we are searching for. This is the bridging point. The larger the range of problems covered by a frame, the larger the range of social groups that can be addressed with the frame, and the greater the, mobi the mobilization capacity of the frame. If we can locate people's existing concerns and bridge them to a shared causation, then we can gain support via a different way, different to using validity alone. The initial approach here, instead of challenging people, sees time spent finding out what people's issues are, then linking them to a shared cause. We can then explore how this cause affects other areas, such as our own initial concern. The introduction of a solution, or the introduction of the movement frame, per se, comes later. Once the existing frame has been expanded or compromised, if people discover a new element to their concern, a new understanding of cause, then it is likely they will be more open to a new understanding of solution. This changes the nature of activism from that of, singular, from that of a single issue responsive approach to a multi-issue systems approach. It is linked together by common cause and solution. Remember, identity, adversary, goal. It is about finding an entry point and widening the frame. I now find myself not solely concerned for young homeless people, but for anyone that suffers as a result of the same cause. We are multi-issue activists, and the goal here is to link things together, building bridges to the minds of all the peoples. This is utilising systems theory and activism. It is linking the wider understanding, not just focusing on what is impulsive, obvious or wrong in front of you. It is about taking the individual's concern and, link, and bridging it from a shared causation to the wider issue. Just to clarify my point, and this is kind of how I see it in my head, I'm blank sometimes. Does anybody remember the game Mole Whacking? Does anyone remember that? And they all, here you go, I'll show you a picture. You know, they all pop up and you stand there trying to hit them down. Do you remember that? Yeah. 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 It's a little bit like this. There are lots of people whacking moles today, as I did in my youth work. People are reacting and they're trying to keep things at bay. With bridging, we're looking to find people who are mole whacking, to empathize with them. Indeed, perhaps tell them about our own irritating mole. But then we seek to find a shared cause, a common enemy. A massive oversimplification, but to be honest, that's how I think about it. The other diagram, it's a bit complicated. Mole whack or pull the plug, spend our lives doing something more fulfilling together. As in the mole whacking example, bridging is also the way you do it. The language, the way you present and relate ideas to people, is the translation of the idea into a language people understand. We heard earlier from Vic C in the linguistics team, 
highlighting the work that they do to translate the materials into different languages. But what I'm getting at is that we all need to be doing this into the language of our everyday lives. The films, each DVD, pamphlet, this presentation, any piece of material, will remain in the original format and appearance it's created. They can only hope to they can only hope to connect with people's frames as they are. You, as living beings, as individuals, you have the ability to frame on demand, so to speak. You are able to take the idea and make it digestible for the audience you are with. You can put the idea into different languages, different worlds, with different frames of reference. Like Danny in the Venus Project taxi, he said last year that although there was one image on the outside of the car and people would ask what it was about, he found himself adapting and responding to the different people that got in. He would try and find a way to frame it for them, related to something they would understand. In many areas, we have become dehumanised to the suffering of others. Whilst this is something we are seeking to change, it is nonetheless something we have to work with. Often a good starting point, the initial point from which to bridge, is the suffering of the person you are speaking to, no matter how seemingly trivial or selfish it may be. As well as finding people's concerns, it is about finding what language people speak and understand. It is about relating the idea to something they already know about making it relevant to their values and belief, and most importantly, their experience in life. The film, for me, has much more frame resonance and bridging capacities of its own. The sections on childhood are something which we can all relate to. But one thing people often say to me is that the films are quite intense. They're a bit long. Some have said that the books are a bit complicated. Not me, but people do. I know that everyone knows really. This is often there is often no one set medium that will appeal to everyone we talk to, and that's something we have to respect and work with. A film or book can only ever take its one form. People can misinterpret them as we all want to know. I just want to make one real brief example using some discourse analysis. I was talking to my cousin Greg, um, asking if he'd seen a new film yet. And I use this example because this was who introduced me to the movie, but ironically, since hasn't really had anything to do with it himself since. Uh, this is by a text. I've copied it directly, so if there's any bad language, it's great <laughs> I said, Oh, that's right. Have you seen the news up about still yet? <laughs> to which my cousin responded, Oh, we'll get round to it. Started it already, but had to stop after 20 minutes. Been intense. I said, as you would. But it's an intense subject. Greg replied, I just think they need to adapt it so that the folks can understand it. <laughs> it is an intense subject, but people need to be able to relate to it. I have to stress here that with, with Plebs, he's talking about himself and so our customers. He's hitting at the notion that for a lot of people, including himself clearly, that the film on its own doesn't hold their attention. Someone asked a question about this yesterday in the Q&A. As an example with my cousin, we can see two things. For him, the concept, the idea, hasn't been made directly relevant to his life. His lack of urgency, when he says, we'll get round to it, denotes that value-wise, it's not a priority. Also, the format, described as a bit intense, shows that for him, a different language is required. Clearly more work is required than him. He did do a political degree, so he's not the sharpest tool. As I have conveyed, hopefully, the idea needs to be put into a language he understands, in a format he can engage with, something he understands and experiences in his own life. Resource based economy. As bridging activists, we have to become the mass translators, the mass frame articulators, finding people's concerns, identifying, sharing, and then working to find common goals. 
So on that note, I'm going to have to stop and try and just sum up things for a moment. If people want me to produce anything more, just let me know and I'll, I'll make some videos more. So to summarise, let's try and highlight what to do now. First, remember, we are all active. <laughs> okay, first, remember, just to run through it, that we are all activists. Whatever you do, do it with purpose. There was a question asked yesterday, and it was quite a good one, and it just said that, that they were too busy, you know, they had a job and, and kids and, and whatnot, and they didn't have time to do activism. What I'm trying to get in there is you don't have to go and do something simple. Whatever it is that you do anyway as part of your life, just do it with purpose. Do it with the purpose of conveying this idea to other people, whether that's people that you spend at work or children that you spend time with. I don't really know what, what happens in your lives, but you just work it into whatever you're doing already. Activism is lots of people talking to lots of people. It is about the communication of an idea. The reason why we have grown is you. It's all of us. Efforts big and small and like. You can clap yourselves again now, it's you. Clap yourselves again. <laughs> this is your life. Take the idea and translate it. Present it to people in your life, in the language they speak, relating it to things they experience and know. The two tools for activism we focused on were frame validity and frame bridging. The final, the, the final, the final thought I wish to leave you with is a question regarding validity and bridging. The two concepts are in no way exclusive. They operate in a very fluid way and both will inevitably be required in pursuit of our When looked at alone, validity, the challenging of frames, the searching for flaws and inconsistencies is an abrasive and often uncomfortable way to communicate. Validity, if reduced, is about getting people to change. It is inevitably about showing them that their frame is wrong and that the frame tested by science is better. This approach alone, or if relied on too heavily, will often lead to people being defensive or a closing of the mind. People have their frames a long time. Most often they're given, most often they're given by and align with their families, the people they care about most. People will defend this no matter what the evidence says. Frame bridging, on the other hand, is about looking for things we have in common. It is about taking time to understand someone's frame, about finding what matters most to them. Then it is about finding what we can do to help each other. Frame validity is about asking someone to change. Bridging is about asking someone for help. I don't doubt that both are involved, but think about the order and the balance to which you use them. People's frames are precious to you. Indeed, they are their very worlds, as are yours for you. As activists, we cannot just run out and seek to tear people's existing worlds away, replacing it with something we see as better. We need to take time to understand their world, their frame, their values and beliefs. We need to speak in their language, for only then can we find the true meanings we share and the real cause of our problems, and the real solution to them, and how to work together to do that.